Coming to you from Dave Chappelle's socially distanced outdoor comedy gazebo, I'm RJ Balde, and this is the Tricomes Hash It Out podcast. On this show, we feature conversations about trending cannabis topics. We also bring in industry insiders and influencers to discuss their point of view. In this episode, I'll be talking to Dr. Christopher Shade about the science behind body detoxification and hemp and CBD. We'll also talk about the importance of evidence-based approaches in the health supplement industry and more. Without further ado, it's time to hash it out. Today, I am joined by Dr. Christopher Shade, founder and CEO of Quicksilver Scientific, which specializes in CBD, hemp, and other botanical and herbal detoxification and supplemental products. Welcome to the show, doctor. I'm stoked to have you. Thank you, RJ. I'm happy to be here. No problem, man. Now, where are you joining us virtually from today? I am joining you virtually from Broomfield, Colorado, and our uh, offices in manufacturing are just about two miles away from here in Louisville, Colorado. Oh, nice. Okay. So you have the convenience of being close to work. That's that's very nice. Oh, yeah. It's always set up that way. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you worked out a good deal there, my friend. Now, yep. how how's your year been going, man? I know that's a loaded question. Oh, yeah. It's been a cranker because a lot of the things that we make are immune supplements. You know, you're either short-term immune building with vitamin C, vitamin D, glutathione, or your long-term immune building with detoxification and metabolic and mitochondrial strategies. So we've just been full bore uh, since COVID started. Nice, man. Now, has uh, business, like how's business been? Have you been affected at all? Have you seen any benefits maybe from increased demand or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Geez. Uh, March, March, we were three times our projected volume vitamin C sales were at seven times their normal and uh and it slowed down a little bit now we're getting deeper into people really wanting to take care of themselves cardiovascular risk factors are a big deal and a lot of what we do is for cardiovascular health too and metabolic health and so that's been real big uh we've been putting together programs for that as you know, as the sort of cold and flu season winds up, as we get colder here, then the immune supplements will, will pop back on the radar, too. Uh, we just won an award for uh, one of our immune supplements called Immune Charge. It's a little shot of vitamin C with elderberry, high doses of vitamin D, A, K, and E. And you could just take that to, to bump things up. And we had our whole staff taking that when COVID really wound up and we had all the operations guys. We had to change everything around in operations and manufacturing, bottling, shipping and receiving. We had to have two different uh, two different teams that never would see each other. One would work three days a week. One would work four days a week. Wow. And so that was, yeah, we had to manage risk factors the whole way through there. But we did a great job and uh, until... We, we had two people uh, had COVID right in the beginning. They were big skiers. And since then, only one person randomly, and it never spread beyond that. I think we're doing a great job of keeping everybody's immune system up. Whew. Well, that's good, man. That's good. That's a, that's a close call right there. But I'm glad everyone is um, safe and, and, you know, their health is doing okay for now. Um, yeah. How have the, have you been affected by any fires at all over, over there? Well, just ash raining down on us. Oh, yeah, no big deal. Just ash raining down. <laughs> yeah, you know, just some ash and people, like, not feeling so good. You know, that's, that's not good for you. But it hasn't come uh, that close to us. Maybe for 30, 40 miles away there was one, but we're not in the tree thick. Mm. Well, that's good, man. I'm I'm glad again that everyone is staying safe. It's like yeah. it's weird because like when you ask someone how they're doing, it's like, well, are you asking me about the fires? Are you asking me about the pandemic? Are you asking me about the election? Like there's so much <laughs> <laughs> everything in one year to freak you out. It's just totally insane. Right, right. Now, how long ago did you uh uh start Quicksilver Scientific? Yeah, well, I started it back in 2006, and originally we started as a testing lab because I had unique patented technology for mercury analysis, which we were doing initially for environmental testing, and then we switched over to testing mercury as a toxin in people, 
And uh, we did that in about 08, 09 during that economic crash. It was kind of a desperation move because environmental stuff was like nobody cared about it during a recession. And uh, we did the testing and then we developed a detox system around that. And that you needed a unique delivery system, a way to get something called glutathione into the body that normally wouldn't go in through capsules. So we got into making these uh, liposomes and nano emulsions and different nanoparticle delivery technologies first for detox products and then the first uh, you know foray away from that it was really to help detox but it was not making vitamin C and glutathione it was making CBD and then of course we did THC too but that was a total game changer our nano CBD was just amazing and it turned out to be the tool that we needed for a lot of the really difficult cases like autism, Lyme, mold toxicity, where the brain is just on fire. It's all lit up all the time, and that's blocking all the healing response. Mm. And CBD was just the golden ticket to, to calm that down so we could get some work done. I love that. That's so fascinating. And it's, it's uh, interesting that you say that um, you were kind of getting the company off the ground during uh, the recession in the 2000s. Yeah. And then here you are now in a pandemic dealing with another recession. <laughs> Did the first one at all prepare you for the sequel? Uh, yeah, I think everything that I did then, like nothing phases me anymore. It's not, <laughs> oh God, what do I do? It's, I'm going to do this, you know, and we, we are very action oriented, very solution oriented. And we were just I got to say, my team was awesome during COVID. I mean, it was a new, it was totally uncharted territory. Every day we we're making a new policy. My HR director, my president, me, you know, we're huddling and then blasting out to the team. All right, here's what we're going to do. Everybody, you're going to split like this. You're going to hmm. test like this. You're going to have your temperature taken, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Every day was a new, you know, how do we take in CDC guidance, health department guidance? Uh, how do we deal with the health department you know, thinking they're going to shut people down? How do, what's the governor doing? Wow. It was, it was just action every day. Whoo. And it still is pedal to the metal, man. I feel like, like every day this year is like its own year. It's like, what's going to oh, happen it, in the course it, of 24 it, hours? Everybody's freaking out all over again. Like this just started. <laughs> right, right. You know, and the president got it. Everybody's getting it. We're all going to die. I had to yell at my team to pull their shit together. You know, just certain elements of them were freaking out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we've been doing this since March, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've, <laughs> yeah, we've been dealing with this for the better part of a year now. Yeah. Um, Why are we suddenly, you know, falling in on ourselves? Yeah. Yeah, that is that is an interesting point yeah. that you bring up. You know, my my son Tama just walked in from uh, CU Boulder, where they they quarantined every eighteen to twenty two year old wow. for two weeks because the cases were starting on the rise. Wow, uh, over there on the hill, and he's like, God, what the hell do I do with myself? You were you had, you. Had, you could get a six thousand dollar fine for being with more than one person. Whoa, get out of here, man. Like I'm way past being eighteen, but I could only imagine back when I was eighteen, like if if the school that I was going at told me to like stay in my dorm for two weeks, I'd at eighteen? Nah. Oh yeah. I mean, this is his <laughs> freshman year. Oh, having a good time. Yeah. Wow, man. So, yeah, they're bugging out to the mountains this weekend now. <laughs> Well, hey, if all else fails, just retreat to the mountains. That's, yeah. that's how Get I live. Get a big man. pack of cannabis and retreat to the mountains. There it is. Bring some seeds with you. Grow your own. You're good. Yep. You're good to go. <laughs> yep. Now, a, a lot of your work uh, focuses on, uh, you just mentioned a little bit ago, um, uh, mercury detoxification and heavy metal detoxification. I understand that you were born in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, which, steel uh, tower. yeah, yeah, you were near one of the biggest steel mills in the nation. And I understand that you also received 17 mercury fillings yourself when you were a child. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, all that happening at once, that had a heavy, heavy toll on me that I only understand now because now that I cleared everything up, you know, my body operates like, you know, like the Maserati I drive. <laughs> and, uh, 
And uh, I don't look as good as it, but I operate as well. And, you know, I didn't operate so well before. I mean, that really took a toll on me. And I remember some changes in my teen years that I thought was just, you know, hormones and stuff. Uh, but I developed this wicked temper. I would put my hand through walls all the time. It was like not people didn't make me mad. It was like when my records skipped and stuff. And, uh, and you know, I was like, I didn't know why that was, but it was, it was, and that's part of the toxicity there because it winds up inflammation in your liver, which irritates you. It winds up inflammation in your brain and it winds up anxiety a lot. It makes you uh, kind of paralyzed by anxiety and and then that's, you know, can cause depressive cycles and stuff. So, you know, these metals really do a lot and they hold down your energy production mm -hmm. in your adrenals, in your mitochondria, your cellular power plants uh, and in the thyroid, too. And so, you know, the, it's like the proverbial lead blanket. It's just holding you down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's. But, you know, as a child receiving 17 for those who may not know. Uh, what a mercury filling is. Can you just explain what that is? Yeah, so those silver fillings that were put where the cavities were, mm -hmm. and then you know the dentist got really overzealous. If there was a crack in your enamel, they'd drill it out and they'd put some in there. And people would call them, quote, silver fillings, but they're actually 50% mercury with you know 48% silver and a couple alloying metals to, to help harden it. And there's mercury vapor coming off of that all the time and you're inhaling it. There's mm. corrosion products coming off of that all the time and you're swallowing it. Mm. And so 24 seven, you've got this mercury load going in. Wow. It's like a steady drip pretty much of uh, yeah. mercury. Yep. That's what it is, you know? And so move, people are moving more to those white fillings, the composites, which they definitely should do. There's no reason to be using this technology. You know, they started using this in like the late 1800s yeah. because uh, they used to use gold foil be before that and it was too laborious. And, you know, these French dudes came up with this mercury amalgam thing and uh, it was the subject of quite a bit of debate. And so you know the term quack as a as it's used for like alternative doctors all that guy's oh, sure. quack yeah yeah sure well that originates from the term quacksalber which is german for quicksilver which is mercury oh, and, wow. and a quack was actually the term for anybody who used mercury in medicine huh. and they were using it for uh, syphilis treatment, and then they started using it for these fillings. And so all these people are like, what? Wait, I thought we got mercury out of medicine. And uh, nope, you know, the dentists were putting it right back in. So it was what? a big subject of controversy, and yet it went on until now because it was just so easy to use. Wait, you mean until now it, it's not still being used, is it? Oh, yeah, totally. About oh, half the oh my God. In there. What? And now – like an economic thing, you know, if you have cheap, like if you have Medicaid, all you get are these amalgams. And yet in different places around the world, they're getting it taken out of dentistry and, you know, totally banned. But here in the good old US of A and in Europe, it's still going. Wow. That is wild, man. That is so wild. It, and there's a lot of theory around why they keep it going because it's used in uh, gold mining, especially what they call, quote, artisanal gold mining. Uh -huh. So that's these guys out in the woods in the Amazon and in Africa, you know, that are getting mercury that's being supposedly used for, quote, dental. And it's getting subverted over to these guys and they're running mercury through these ores to pull gold out. And then they're like burning it off on spoons like these guys cooking down crack and. And, uh, and they're getting little bits of gold and they're selling them to the big gold companies. Oh my gosh. That is so that crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy that that's going on today. Like that's happening now. Yeah. It's, like, it's crazy. It's going on, man. So, you, you know, your, your foundation in, in the passion that you have for, uh, for this subject, uh, you know, we just mentioned reaches back into your childhood with personal experience. So, Looking back now, uh, when you were going to school, when you were in university, how did you come to work with a professor with a professor who happened to also be studying mercury? How did that meeting happen? Yeah, well, so I I had this long circuitous route. I left uh, college and traveled around and stuff. And actually, I was I was shall we say precocious with cannabis growing. I was growing indoor 
organic ebb and flood uh, <laughs> hydroponic cannabis in on the East Coast back in the late 80s, early 90s. Wow. So I had this love of organic farming. And then I went into organic vegetable farming. I was like, I'm going to go legit and uh, spent a little time doing that. And then you know, it's just hard to make ends meet. I, I joke that uh, I went out of business the year Whole Foods came around. There wasn't any money in it. <laughs> sure, sure. And and uh, and weed grow was so fucking illegal. You didn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, at least not as a business. And so I I left and I I went in. I went back to school and I got a master's looking at agricultural pollution. Uh, nutrient pollution. And then I was going to do a PhD and I thought I was going to do that. And I went to the University of Illinois where there was a big agronomy school and they had me interview with this guy, Bob Hudson, who was studying global cycling of mercury and global cycling of carbon. He built this big model, these carbon cycling models that he applied to mercury cycling models. And he's like, well, I want to get all my own data and he was just the smartest dude by a long shot there. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, can you start a lab and can you design this methyl mercury analyzer for me? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> What's a methyl mercury? <laughs> and, uh, and he just set me loose and, you know, big bar of steel equipment from all the old professors there, you know, who rooted me on and I figured it all out and uh, got a patent and started my company with this testing technology. Wow. What? Uh, I how serendipitous there's like it almost sounds like fate that you just like ran into this dude and he trusted you with the project yeah it totally was you know that's the way it works everybody thinks you know i planned this all out you know when i was 13 and i wanted to save the world right like, you don't know what the hell's gonna come it just comes and then you jump on it wow wow what a great opportunity. So that led you, uh, like you just mentioned, to eventually create uh, the company Quicksilver Scientific, which I had no idea until just now that the the word Quicksilver, it, it means mercury. Had no idea. Yeah. Quick means liquid. And so it's liquid silver. Fancy that. Look at that. You learn something new every day. So Quicksilver Scientific offers uh, an, an array of, of uh, herbal products that are designed for uh, detoxifying the, the human system. Can you just run through um, the um, uh, the lineup of, of products that you offer? Yeah, so it's it's you know to, they're, they're beyond just herbal products. These some of them are pure compounds out of plants, some are whole plants. But the whole key to how our stuff works so darn well is the technology of the delivery system. And these mm -hmm. are these things called liposomes and nano emulsions where you're making this little fatty droplet that holds your compounds you want to deliver into the body. And you make them so small that when you put them in your mouth as liquids, they absorb right through the oral cavity, right into the capillaries there. And what doesn't get absorbed gets absorbed then in the stomach and the small intestine. Mm. So some of these things, you put them in your mouth, in two minutes you can see them in your bloodstream. With the cannabinoids, uh, we apply this technology and you'll peak, whether it's CBD, THC, you'll peak your blood concentrations between 15 and 25 minutes after you take it. Wow. And so usually edible cannabis is taking you a couple hours to a peak and then, you know, three hours to peak and about 12 days to come down, it feels like, <laughs> you know, when you eat too many brownies. Yep. And this is much different. It all goes in really quick and then it comes off. And in fact, this delivery we we do for cannabis beverages, we're supplying the technology to Molson Coors yep. for a joint venture with Hexo Cannabis up in Canada, where they came to us because they wanted cannabis to have the onset and offset like alcohol. And so we made these drinks and you're peeking in your in the drinks it takes a little bit longer because you're drinking it slowly mm -hmm. but you peak in the blood in about 40 minutes and then it's uh you know another two hours or so to come off so it's just like alcohol and so those wow. have been released under the company trust beverages uh up in canada and they also have this little concentrate where you can put it in your own drink so you want to put it in your gin and tonic go ahead oh. now it's a gin and cannabis and tonic wow look at that i like that that is and really you get cool. about six fold higher uptake uh, than if you were just taking cannabis in a little oil dropper or, or in a capsule. Huh. Interesting. And that, and, and that, um, 
uh, delivery system that you have developed, that delivery technology, uh, you have a patent on that. Yeah, we've got a number of patents uh, either issued. We have, I think, eight different patents that are either issued or patent pending. Mm. Uh, a couple are around cannabis applications. There's hormone applications. We've got the detox system. We've got uh, some of the different vitamin blends. We've got some mitochondrial blends all in there. And we have a number of things coming out. But uh, just to wrap up on, on what the lineup is, we started with these detox systems, and they're all based on this really rapid, high delivery of these compounds into the body that mobilize toxins out of the cells, wind up the liver to be dumping things out of the liver uh, and into the GI tract. And then you come in with these binders that pick it all up and take it away. Wow. So that was the core system. And then we have different vitamins that go around with it, a broad cannabis line, some that are the CBD line, some are for sleep, some are for stress and anxiety, some are for pain. And, you know, people talk about the entourage effect. Well, we bring in a lot of other different herbal compounds as well as neurotransmitters and sometimes hormones in order to create a really targeted CBD based product. Wow. Tell me about the process um, for getting these patents, because, you know, there are a lot of companies out there that love to tout their onset time and, and use, you know, whether it be like nanotechnology or different sort of delivery systems that they have uh, created. What have you found um, the products at Quicksilver do differently than other detoxifying products on the market? Yeah, well, both the detox stuff and uh, and the cannabis, you know, we're the only ones that actually have data on this. Everybody touts all their stuff, but we, because we were originally an analytical lab, we have a very sophisticated lab setup, and we're able to do our own pharmacokinetic studies. That's a study of what your blood levels are after you take something. So we know, oh, at the onset time is this, the offset time is that. It's not just a couple of guys sitting around going, yeah, I feel stoned now. <laughs> you know, we have like actual scientific data. And then on the detox system, we have a lot of data around it getting the toxins out. I mean, we have so much that even they use our detox systems in the functional medicine clinic in Cleveland Clinic. So wow. we're up at a national, very respectable level. Uh, we're doing a, a bunch of studies now where there are actually these groups at George Washington University and the Cleveland Clinic are doing studies uh, applying detoxification to their mixed therapies for diabetes, uh, for cancer. They're looking at how toxins interact with these different pathologies. And if taking the toxins out, help with all that. And so we're the only ones, you know, people talk about, oh yeah, you take this herb and you detox. This is the only, you know, it, we're the only systems that do this exceedingly scientifically. Right. And, and the, the companies um, that you have partnered with to supply your products and, and your proprietary uh, uh, technology, are those products available yet? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been okay. doing stuff for a long time. And we are originally what's called a professional supplement company. We would sell the doctors and then the doctors sell to the patients. Mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. either us directly selling or through a number of distributors that <clears throat> like Emerson Ecologics and Natural Partners that sell to the doctors. And then we started going direct to consumer and through Amazon. So all of our stuff from Quicksilver Scientific is available to almost anybody. There's a couple of products that are only for professionals, but the broad line is available to anybody. I love that. Now, you, yeah. And you you mentioned that um, you know, uh, uh, Quicksilver's been around for a, a while now. Um, but when you started, you know, there wasn't really this mass appeal for that type of product just yet. You know, a, a healthy alternative uh, or you know, a uh, um, natural or or plant based alternative to medicines or or supplements. Do you see a shift? in mentality uh, changing? And, and when did you first notice that shift begin? Yeah, I mean, it, the market was there. And people were doing it. They just weren't doing it a whole as much as they are now. So mm. uh, over the last, 
you know, over the last 10 years, it's become much more mainstream. And it used to be, oh, yeah, that's voodoo, that's quackery and stuff. And it's like, uh, no, actually, I'm on the faculty of George Washington University, and I teach doctors through their programs how to do this stuff. Right. It, it's, right. like, like, it's in all these very reputable places. This is real stuff now. And I got to say that CBD was one of the things that helped bring consumers uh, into that market. They're like, oh, I thought that was all voodoo, but look what the CBD does. Let me check out some of their other stuff. Mm. And so there's been a there's been a great opening there. And, you know, at the same time, we do license these technologies out. And so we get a little bit more reach that way, especially with the THC. So all this technology uh, applies to THC beautifully. And like I said, we, you know, we license it to the Molson Coors group, mm -hmm. but we also license it to groups like Wana Wellness. Wana is the most famous gummy manufacturer and yeah. they're about to release our line that we license it to a group in California. And so now this technology is starting to spread out into the THC manufacturers too. So it, it's been this gradual shift over into respectability and uh, in the cannabis world, first, all they wanted to do was just get high. It was just like, <laughs> oh, weed's legal. Great. Yeah. But now the more, you know, some of the older crowd is getting into it, the more professional crowd. And they don't want to just walk around smoking a joint. Oh, let me take a bong rip here before my meeting. Uh, right. You know, now they're wanting these dosage forms that are like pump, pump, pump or a dropper bottle or a capsule, things that look more medical. And so now the demand for our technology is starting to grow in the THC world. Is that um, one of the reasons, whether it be a subconscious decision or a conscious decision, um, to not go in uh, the direction that a, a lot of uh, cannabis companies, frankly, go into nowadays, especially, which is um, uh, just ch simply just chasing high THC levels. Oh, yeah. Chasing high THC levels is stupid. You know, <laughs> you want, I mean, that's just, you know, <laughs> you look, dabbers are dabbers. They'll always be there, but that's sure. not big markers. That's not where the big market is. Uh, the big market is these people are just, you know, getting comfortable going over and starting to use these more medically directed, precisely delivered uh, applications. I mean, even for me, you know, I, I mean, obviously I grew weed a long time ago. I like THC, mm -hmm. but I've got, you know, I'm a more sensitive one. I've got, you know, not a really high tolerance. I must have a very high receptor density mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm a high functioning CEO. So I need to know what my dosages are. I want to know exactly how much I'm getting in and I want it reproducible. And so we do this with these pump tops that are exactly the same volume each time, giving you exactly the same milligram dosage. And we've seen in our uptake studies that when things go through the GI tract, you know, there's a hundred percent variation between different people, but when they go through these uh, intraoral or sublingual nanos precisely delivered, there's only about uh, 20 to 30 percent variation in blood levels person to person. And so it's a much more predictable thing. The onset's predictable. The blood levels are predictable. This is what people want in the big market that's starting to come into cannabis. Mm, yeah, that that's so important to... Um you know, emphasize, you know, making sure that, uh, that these products will work for a wide array of people because, you know, for the average, uh, consumer, uh, whether it be for wellness products or, or just cannabis in general, uh, you don't always know what you're going to get. If you go to different places, you know, you might get the same product, the same type of product at two different places and it hits you different. Oh, yeah, it is so I mean, I got some pens recently and it was like some of them did nothing. Some of them got you really wasted. And I just <laughs> I'm like, I don't like this at all. Yeah. And so there's no consistency. There's no reproducibility. Uh, they're really good players are. But, you know, I unless you're like really surfing through the market, you don't know who's good and who's not. Yeah, exactly. And that's why uh, another reason um, uh, that I like that you take an, an evidence and a science and a study-based approach, um, you know, is to ensure that that experience, that consistency rather for yeah. uh, your clientele and your consumer base. Yeah. And we've been, you know, we pioneered this in these delivery systems and uh, you know, these 
like the size of these little droplets is is precisely controlled it's measured during production these are they're called the specifications for the product the potency has to be there the size of the nanoparticle uh, everything's done the same way so the product does the same thing every time and then we brought this into the cannabis world they, they'd never seen that kind of consistency before. <laughs> yeah oh yeah uh, yeah that's for damn sure that is for damn sure now um so uh how do i ask this so in a world you know uh um the a health and, and wellness industry um, is sort of seeing a moment, re like lately, uh, w w you know, with the introduction of CBD and, and other uh, non-psychoactive cannabinoids entering the space. Um, but that has also sort of facilitated the appearance of a lot of products that claim to be for your health and well-being or, or supplemental products uh, that are really just sort of based on anecdotes more than anything rather than scientific uh, yeah. data and research. So in a world where we have, you know, quote unquote, detoxifying juice cleanses or quote unquote, uh, activated charcoal pills or goop by Gwyneth Paltrow, how, yeah. is it, how important is it for you now personally to make sure that your products are backed by that data and analysis more than ever. Yeah, it's it's really important because detox has a bad name, yet it is so fundamentally important. And it's amazing how many mainstream doctors are just like, look, your liver and kidneys are all doing that for you or else you'd be dead. But <laughs> then, uh, you, you know, the, the scientific literature is starting to prove all this stuff out. And so... It is just so fundamentally important that we differentiate ourselves with these data sets, uh, with clinical studies, and we're doing more and more of them. We're starting to do studies on epigenetic changes that are happening. There's, we've done, uh, we've had clinics that did studies on fatty liver uh, using our products, and it was just like it was working better than pharmaceuticals, you know, because. Mm. Pharmaceuticals tend to be these monotherapies. Take this one drug, and we're like, no, you got to take this whole family of different things. We're going to put them all together for you. We're going to make it easy, but you got to hit all these molecular triggers in the cell, and then you'll get the results that you want. And so, you know, these guys down in Texas get an 82% resolution of non alcoholic fatty liver in one to two months. Like, nobody sees that kind of data. Yeah. And wow. so, this is how we differentiate. You know, it's not, yeah, Younger's, you know, juice fast. They'll send them to your house and you'll change your life. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, subscribe to this monthly subscription box and we'll send you carrot juice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, that's good, and I'm glad people are, are doing that, but don't think that that is a real medical therapeutic uh, type of intervention. Yeah. How difficult is it, though, to differentiate yourself from those sorts of uh, uh, products when you're sort of next to each other in the same sort of realm. Right. Well, well that's all done through education. And uh, I do a lot of lecture. I lecture in internationally at all these uh, functional medicine and integrative medicine uh, conventions. So I'm a PhD. I'm a thought leader. I'm teaching people what these pathways are, how to use them, how to do stuff. I give webinars. I do an hour and a half long webinar almost every month. And they're all on our website and as soon as the doctors see this it's like okay <laughs> this is not a juice fast this is the real deal yeah and so it's really it's just an education base and you just blow them away uh with the knowledge base and they're in yeah that's true that's true and it might take a while to change public perception or or, or to really yes. you know differentiate yourself in the minds of consumers but yeah i feel like you know, education is the honestly the most and almost only tool that is effective in in changing that perception. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. Now, um, speaking of of the all of the uh, educational speaking you do and, and webinars and online work, which by the way, how has the pandemic affected that work that you do? <laughs> Everything's online, and there's almost. <laughs> more lectures now because people are like oh well i don't have to get a hotel <laughs> and food together so how about we just do these things all the time and yeah you know, so i'm like making slide decks all the time I've, <laughs> I've built out my educational team so they're starting to do this stuff for me and i'm you know all these conferences has gone have gone virtual i just went to the first 
live conference. It was down in Arizona in Scottsdale. It was an autism conference. It was the first live conference uh, since the start of COVID, and that was two weeks ago. Wow. And uh, it was really great to get out and see some people live. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, the education keeps cranking. I just want to get real people back together. Yeah, I, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that, man, because I've noticed that too, that like the pandemic, it, it obviously uh, has, you know, sort of effectively halted all in-person events. But I feel like the amount of events hasn't diminished because like you said, so many are online now. And because people are like, oh, it's as easy as, you know, someone just needs a laptop and a link, a Zoom link, yep. and, and they're in this thing. And so I feel like, yeah, there's more now. Um than I think there was in person before the pandemic. Yeah, no, it's true. There's more content shuffling around out there, but you know, it's got a little bit of an emptiness to it because there's not, you know, the face-to-face -face stuff. I did yeah. the first virtual. One of the other autism conferences was a virtual one, and you know, they tried to have like virtual trade show and everything. Oh, it, that was just like that's just a mess. Yeah, uh, I don't understand fine, how. Fine, but a whole conference. You know, that personal interaction is just totally, totally lost. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand how people could do like a whole, a whole ass trade show like that. I don't. Oh, just disaster. <laughs> <laughs> just disaster. I know people are like trying to use like VR now even. And I'm like, no one had like, how many people actually have like a good VR set? Like some people do, but not, it's not a commonplace thing that everyone has. Oh yeah. I mean, no. It, it, no, it's it's a silly idea. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um, you know, the pandemic has um made you have to adapt what you're doing in terms of education and, and public speaking, but you're still doing a lot of it. Um, in a podcast that you did uh, with uh, Dr. Michael Carlfeld, um, you sort of talked about the three phases of detox detoxification and the significance of the order in which they happen. So. Um, for the layman uh, sure. or the lay person, rather, what are the basic steps in detoxifying the body? Yeah. So you got these toxins in there, you know, some plastic, you're plasticized, you're exposed to a metal, uh, you know, a pesticide, what have you there. They get into the blood and they get into the cells and then you got to get them back out. So how are you going to get them out? And it's this sort of relay race uh, where first you tag them. And uh, these are these phases. So phase one, two, three. Phase one, you're going to like kind of cut into it and make it reactive. And then you're going to link. Uh, uh, a, it's like a shipping tag on it. It's one of your molecules that you make, like glutathione I, I needed for mercury detox. You can link that on to a pesticide, say. Mm -hmm. So now you've got this pesticide glutathione complex in the cell. And now it's recognizable by a transport system. And this transport system are at the cell membranes, and it's going to boot it out of the cell into the blood. All right? So okay. uh, phase one was cutting into it. Phase two is linking your thing onto it, your tag onto it. And phase three is popping it across this transporter. Now it's in the blood, and now there's a couple more phase three reactions. And one of them pulls that. Uh, glutathione toxin conjugate into the liver cell. And then the next one dumps it out of the liver cell into the bile, which is that green mm. liquid that comes out of the liver. And it's usually you think of it for uh, digestion, but it's also moving the toxins out. And then from there, it goes down to the GI tract and then you poop it out. Now, similarly, the kidneys can pull it into the urinary flow and you can pee it out. Mm. And you can even do a little bit of sweating it out, but it's the liver is the biggest one, kidneys next, and then other pathways. And so you need all these, the phase one, phase two, phase three, and you need that linked to the bile flow. So you got to make sure your bile's flowing. And uh, then when it gets down to the GI tract, then you want a binder to pick it up, and that's where something like charcoal comes in. And we make a more sophisticated uh, product that's got – charcoal and zeolites and uh, something called chitazan and a special metal binder along with some things to heal the GI tract. And mm -hmm. so 
we line this all up, you know, turn up all these phases, turn up the bioflow, get your binders in place. And when you do all that, it works really, really well. Now, the one key is that when you're all toxic and sick, your nervous system gets all jacked up and the toxins in the brain get your, ner your, your brain all jacked up. And it's called a sympathetic autonomic tone where you're in fight or flight. So, wow. you know, there's fight or flight and then there's rest and digest. Mm -hmm. And in rest and digest, it's rest, digest, repair, regenerate, detoxify. So you need to get yourself out of that wind up mode. And that's where the CBD comes in. So we hit all these mm -hmm. things at once. We put the CBD in to calm you down. We put the compounds to wind up the phases in the cell. We put uh, the herbal extracts to wind up the, the bile flow and do that all at once. And then a little bit later, come in with the binder to pick it all up. And you've got this beautiful, scientifically developed, integrated detoxification system. Wow. And, and where can uh, uh, anybody uh, who's interested in learning more about these products, uh, where can they find out more information about uh, the, all of the science that you just mentioned that um, is behind the, the development of, this, of these products? Right. So QuicksilverScientific.com. Uh, yeah, uh, you see, we just if you go on there, we just launched a consumer website. There'll be a lot of education there. There'll be a different one if you're a doctor. You'll create an account. It'll take you to a slightly different site. So there's a lot of education on our website, and then on YouTube, there is a Quicksilver Scientific YouTube page that yeah. catalogs a lot of my webinars, and people can watch these long webinars. And on the product pages. Uh, at the site, there's little two minute videos on each product and how it works. And the detox system we just talked about is called push catch liver detox. And it comes as a little kit. Uh, and, uh, and you can, you can find information, like I said, on those product pages or on YouTube. That's awesome. And yeah, I was checking out your YouTube page and, um, the videos are really great and they're so informative and they're so easy, uh, to to digest, pun intended, and um, yes. they are more often than not hosted by you. So our yes. our listeners can uh, put a face to the voice if they head over to your YouTube page. Yep, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, man. So what's next for uh, for Quicksilver? What have you got down the line? What have you got prepared for the rest of the year and into 2021 that you can share, of course, yeah. that you can share? <laughs> Yeah, well, we're, we're winding out uh, or opening up our longevity line. And so we do a lot of work in the anti-aging space because what we found out is, you know, when people are toxic and ill, you got to go in and you got to fix a bunch of things. You got to fix the liver functioning. You got to fix mitochondrial functioning. You got to fix the metabolic sensors that enable you to go between fasted and fed states. And when you do all that, those are the things you need for longevity. And where, you know, you go from fixing to then optimizing. And so we're going to add a couple things in that optimize more of, uh, we do a lot of work on uh, mitochondrial function, uh, especially with a compound called NAD. But we're going to do a little bit around gene repair too, uh, something that's called a telomere lengthener. And so you'll see, and we have some hormone products coming out. So they're all in the longevity line that you'll see coming out uh, to go with our detoxification and metabolic and mitochondrial lines. Right on. And when can, uh, do you know when we could expect the longevity line to come out? Uh, well, some of it's already there, but the, the, the real new products should come out around December. Okay. And we also have, we have some special zinc products that are called zinc ionophores. This is something that came out in the research around COVID was zinc transport issues. And uh, there's these, these complexes of zinc and quercetin that you can make uh, that uh, have a much higher absorption in the cells and can help you wind up immunity much faster. Wow, that's so awesome, man. Yeah. That is so great, man. Like the work that you're doing, uh, I, you know, I, I can certainly hear and, and feel the passion behind it. Obviously, you have a rich history in yeah. dealing with this, a uh, very rich personal history. And uh, yeah, the work that you're doing to bring this sort of scientific-backed uh, uh, um, 
uh, technology and, and, and methodology into your products, man. That's so great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course, man. And, um, yeah. Oh, uh, so we know where people can find, uh, what's going on with Quicksilver. Can people find out what's going on with you personally and keep up with you on the internet at all? Yeah, they, uh, go to our, our website and just, uh, uh, join us, make an account, sign up for the newsletter, and then you'll be getting all the updates of what we're doing and where we're going when we're at, you know, doctor events versus when we're at public events uh, and the webinars. Some are doctor, but a lot of them are public webinars. And so just just join our community. And uh, of course, you can find us. Of course, I forget about all the social media. You know, I must be old. Uh, <laughs> Instagram, Dr. Christopher Shade. And Facebook, Quicksilver Scientific. Uh, you can find a lot of stuff there. We do a lot of Facebook Lives as well on there. Right on, man. Well, Dr. Shade, I appreciate you so much taking the time to have this conversation with me. I hope that you and your loved ones and, and all of everyone in your community and everyone at Quicksilver continues to stay safe and to uh, stay well, man. All right. Thank you. And uh, the same to you. Yeah, thanks. And you know what? Hopefully, um, once uh, it's safe to see each other in person once again, uh, we can rehash it out for a sequel. Uh, maybe Absolutely. in person. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, Dr. Shea, thank you again. Uh, be safe, stay well, and we will talk to you again real soon. My thanks again to Dr. Christopher Shade for joining me. If you are a member of the cannabis community and have a story you want to share with us, we would love to hear from you. You can reach the show at hashitout at trichomes.com. You can help others find the show by taking a moment to subscribe to the podcast and write a review. You can also join the discussion with industry insiders and get your voice heard by joining the community at trichomes.com and following us on all social media. Hash It Out is produced by David Fortin and presented by trichomes.com. I'm RJ Balde. Thanks for listening.